Hey yo, what is up? I got five budget bangers for you today, starting from $29, $39, $45, $49, and lastly $79. Three of these mice have 8K polling capabilities. I'm gonna start with the cheapest, and it's the Ajaz 179. And as you can see, I actually have two of them. Uh, one is the $29, one is the $79. So the cheapest one is in the budget range, budget banger, and the most expensive one is also a budget banger. Now I've already covered the $79 Apex version, and if you want to see that video, I'll leave a link for you. Um, they are both Lamzu Thorn clones, which means it's a fairly aggressive Ergo shape. Uh, the $29 EJ179 comes with a 3395 sensor with max polling rate of 1000 kilohertz uh, and uses one green shell white dot switches. It weighs 59 grams and also uh, the only mouse here that isn't tri mode. Um, next is the $39 Kisona M600 um, TLDR. This is a G Pro Superlight Mini, also with a 3395 sensor and maximum 1000 Hz polling. Uh, this comes with the famous Wano blue shell pink dots. I'm going to give you a sound test for all of them in a minute, um, but we're just going to quickly glean over them and then. We'll do that a little bit later. Uh, this weighs 56 grams and does have Bluetooth connection capabilities, which means it's a try mode. Uh, a nice touch about this mouse is the accompanying dongle and paracord is orange in color and uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, the third mouse here is the $45 key Sona M617 um, with wireless 8K polling all built into a micro dongle. What's a micro dongle? A micro dongle is, well it's not here, but it's here. The regular dongle is a 8K capable dongle and that's pretty cool. That means you don't need to lug around a huge brick or a puck. Uh, to take everywhere with you this will do 8k for you easily it also runs a 3395 sensor and weighs uh, 62.5 grams uh, the switches are the newest huano transparent blue shell pink uh, sorry transparent purple shell white dots and uh, this is the latest one i think this is 90 million rated for 90 million clicks and uh, in my opinion it feels and sounds better than a blue shell pink dot here's a sound comparison between the two just very quickly i'm gonna do a sound test later on but now just a little taste for you guys the special thing about this mouse is it's a very comfortable shape for uh, you know, if you have bigger hands like me, this is really great. The fourth mouse that I have for you here is the Incot G23. This is a one-to-one -one clone of the G Pro Superlight. It can do uh, 8000 Hz polling, but you do have to buy a separate AK dongle. Uh, it does weigh kind of heavy, 67 grams. And the special thing about this mouse is you have four sets of switches that you can easily swap out by just ripping it out and pulling out the switches with your fingers if you can grip them. And there you go. Very simple. Under five seconds, you can take it out and uh, slot it back in. And that is the special thing about the Incord G23. It comes with four sets of switches you can switch it around customize it and uh, get it to how uh, you want it to feel you know customize your feel and sound preferences and the last mouse of course is the 
AJS again the 179 but this is the $79 Apex version again a one-to-one -one clone of the Lamzu Thorn that weighs 62 grams uh, this mouse has 8k polling right out of the box and comes with a dock and it comes with the latest 3950 sensor it's the only one here with the 3950 sensor although the G23 you can get this version uh, with a 3950 sensor as well again this dock comes with a TFT screen uh, that displays uh, you know what connection you have it displays um, uh, you know all kinds of information you can also play a gif like i'm doing it here and when i turn it on when i turn it off it goes back to displaying uh what mode i am in and then the other modes that it can display is your dpi and stuff like that but you, you get my point that's what it's for um shows you your battery status and stuff like that but anyway we'll move on to the next subject which is build quality and uh, we'll start with all of them are solid but if i had to pick the most solid mouse out of the five here it would be the g23 easily um, and the weakest one if i had to pick i would pick the ages uh, the 28 dollar ages 179 uh, because only because the mouse one and mouse two buttons are a little bit squeaky uh, when i say squeaky i mean it's got a bit of a grindy feel if i press hard on it i can hear it i can feel it um, if you are an aggressive clicker if you are heavy-handed you can definitely feel it in my case scenario i'm very light-handed i grip very lightly and i also actuate the buttons very lightly so i can't actually feel it myself but if i do press hard on it i can kind of feel it's uh, not so nice funny thing is it doesn't happen on the AJS 179 Apex on the Apex it is absolutely perfect even when I'm aggressive so it's really strange even though they are the same shell I I suppose the internals the way they mount the switches are the same as well but one is grindy and the more expensive one isn't uh, I don't know for what reason the next topic I want to talk about is the size and shape uh, starting with the AJS 179 like I mentioned is an ergo shape fairly aggressive uh, this isn't a very big sized mouse it is very suitable for small medium hands um, for bigger hands it will work too but you might feel your finger kind of overhanging a little bit I have 21 by 12 hands my fingers I have to be I have to have a little bit of an aggressive claw in order to play this mouse if i try to wrap my hand around it i'm kind of like overhanging uh, my fingers on the buttons a little bit so i need to have my fingers kind of like kind of like in an aggressive position so uh, that's my only gripe with it it is not really made for uh, big hands like mine um, but again i can adapt it works well i don't have a problem with it the next mouse is the keysona 39 dollar m600 again this is a small g pro superlight and this is going to be great for kids it's going to be great for girls it's going to be great for anyone that is like five foot five five foot six and it's a very popular shape and it's going to fit a smaller hand if you're a 12 year old kid this is what i would recommend you go for because it is going to be a G Pro super light shape but in a smaller size that will fit your hand better then when you get older then you get a full size G Pro super light if you should choose to do so because if you are a girl or if you are a 12 year old kid a G Pro super light might be too big for you and this uh, smaller size G Pro super light is just going to be perfect uh, I, I guarantee it uh, next up, the $45 key sonar for me is the most spe special shape out of the lot. It has a low trigger on a big mouse. It is like an OGM cloud minus the big fat wide butt. So this is, out of all the mouses here, this is the most unique shape. And this is the one that is most suitable, suited to my 21 by 12 hands. Um, 
Next up is the Incord G23, literally a G Pro Super Lite, like I mentioned, and frankly, the features make it a better choice for one third of the price. It is also the heaviest at 67 grams and it feels also like the toughest one. You can really throw this at someone and you can really hurt them. Um, I've already covered the AJS 179 so I'm not going to go back to the shape and size for the Apex version. I want to talk about the coating, the cheapest coating, AJS 179 and the Kisona M600 have no rubberized coating, at least I don't feel it on the edges. I'm pretty sure there's no rubberized coating, it's just smooth plastic. So is the um, Kisona M600, smooth plastic, but still very nice. I really don't have any complaints, but I am a person that um, like mice with and without coatings. I do like the smooth coating, smooth touch. It doesn't matter if it has rubberized coating or not. For me, it feels fine and I can get along with it no problem. Um, the Kisona M617 feels like it has a very mild coating which you could easily mistaken for no coating but uh, you know, again, I wouldn't complain about it. It is smooth to the touch. I do feel it has some coating. If I really want to do that sticky test, I can do it. You know, just use your palm there to grip it a little bit and then your fingers to hang on to it. I can lift it up. So I do feel that it does have some kind of coating in my opinion. Uh, next up is the G23. This has the most aggressive coating out of all. Easily pick it up with my palm and my fingers using the stickiness and after it warms up it becomes even stickier i feel like the last couple of months uh the chinese brands have really found the secret sauce when it comes to grippy coatings and um it seems like all the mouse that's coming out from china right now with the grippy coating they seem to be executing it really well and there's really no problem no complaints about it very grippy coating very good if you like grippy coatings uh the ajs apex 179 as well has a grippy coating that is almost exactly a one-to-one -one clone of the lamzu thorn clothing uh lamzu thorn coating and if you are familiar with it that that means to say it's dry it's chalky and it gets aggressive as it warms up uh, next time i want to talk about the buttons both the AJS 179s you use the Quano transparent green shell white dots uh, they work great but they're not as great as the transparent blue shell pink dots which I feel is kind of the minimum requirement in 2024 um, the entry level AJS 179 as I mentioned has a bit of a grindy squeak if you press down hard on it you can't really feel it but if you pay close attention put it up to your ears you can kind of feel it and hear that squeak again it is not something that I would uh gripe about or you know it's not a deal breaker but i feel like since i'm reviewing all the mouse i might as well mention it so that you know exactly what you are getting uh, i'm not trying to sugarcoat it and make it sound like it's the best thing ever there are some little bit of flaws here and there and you should know about um, i have a very light grip again like i mentioned so i don't even notice it but if you have a heavy uh, click you're gonna feel it on the key sona they are using the huano blue shell pink dot which i mentioned earlier but this is the blue shell pink dot that is not the transparent one this is the first blue shell solid blue shell pink dot um, but it's still a great mouse for smaller hands you're getting proper 80 million clicks rated switches in a compact uh g pro super light shape with you know crispy switches so that's really awesome the kisona like i mentioned earlier has even better buttons it has the huano transparent purple shell with white dots rated to 90 million clicks in my opinion it's even it has even lighter clicks than uh and, and still remains uh sharp and crispy lastly the Incord G23 comes with a set of four switches and in my opinion the best one is the one that I have right here right now which is the brown switches that are silent switches as you can see there is no sound when you click on it side switches have sound middle button has sound 
scroll wheel has sound, M1 and M2 no sound. And the reason why it has no sound is because I like it uh, without the pre-travel. When you use the brown switches, there is absolutely no pre-travel. It is just immediate click and then a tiny amount of post-travel. Tiny amount of post-travel. I'm forcing it here. Uh, but yeah, no pre-travel and then a little bit of post-travel. This is like, it feels like it is instant and that is why uh, it's kind of great for me. Uh, but let's move on and talk about the next subject, which is the PTFE feed. Uh, some are black, some are white. Uh, the one on the on the uh, M600 key sonar was not properly installed. There is some bumps, if you can see on the edge here. Not perfect, but does not affect uh, the way it glides, the way it works. But it, there is a little bit of imperfection there. The good news is inside the box, there is an extra set of glass skates. So I could easily replace that if I want. Right now, it doesn't bother me. So I just stick with it. Um, some of these, uh, some of these my mouse comes with black feet. And I don't really like them for some reason. I feel like they are inferior. I feel like they are poorly manufactured in fact let me show it to you on the AJS apex it is kind of like bubbly you can actually press down on it it will depress it feels like there's an air bubble there's an air gap in between uh, the PDFE feet and the base of the mouse so that's why I don't really like these black feet uh, you know I can feel like there's movement when I press down on it so that that is the reason why I don't like um, the black feet but the the white ones the best feet out of all of these mice here are the ones on the in, in cord they are thick and they are solid they are flat PTFE they are very very flat there is no curves nothing on it it, it looks like they sanded it down on sandpaper before they delivered it I mean that's how flat it looks and feels so it gives the um, glide experience a, a, a different level it makes it stand out from the rest of the mice not to say the rest of the mice are terrible but you can clearly see that the edges are kind of like higher and then the middle part is kind of like sunken down kind of like concave um, so it's not completely flat right you can see the edges here are kind of like slightly higher than the middle parts of the mouse um, whereas when you get a really good quality uh, PTFE feed you can see these are good quality just because it is completely flat every part of that PTFE feed is going to be touching the mouse pad and that gives it a really good experience I wanted this video to be a short video I'm trying to talk as fast as I can but it's already 18 minutes but that it is what it is now i'm going to show you the sound test and we're going to start with the m6 uh, or the ajs we'll start with the ajs 29 dollar uh, huano green shell white dots
So there you go, five real budget bangers for you guys, starting with the AJS $28 AJS with the uh, 30-something uh, $39 M600 and then with the Kisona M617 $45 and then the G23 $49 and the Apex $79. Now if I'm going to rate this mouse um, by what I like, I'm going to rate the Kisona at number one. This is the 8K capable with a small dongle, very nice shape for big hands, Huano transparent purple shell white dots with very nice clicks. It is just a fantastic mouse if you like, kind of like a Viper V3 Pro shape. Well, not the shape, but the size. Uh, if you have big hands, you want a big mouse experience, this is it. If you don't want a shape up like a G Pro Superlight, this is it. Um, this is my number one mouse out of this. Number two mouse, I'm going to pick the Incord because it is a very comfortable G Pro Superlight shape. If you're going to pick a G Pro Superlight and you're going to pick an uh, Incord G23, I say pick an Incord G23 because it is one third the price of a G Pro Superlight V2. This is my second choice. My third choice is the Apex AJS179. This is an ergo shape that is uh, kind of like the most popular, most loved ergo shape. A lot of people like this shape on the phone. Uh, the other one is on the Zowie. Uh, this is almost, I suppose, almost like the same size like the Death Adder Hyperspeed, the new one. And this is my third choice. Now, as for um, value for money, out of all these five mouses, the best value for money is the AJS 179, the $29 version. Because the $29 version, there is no mouse better than this price. I think I, I heard some people getting this for under $20 in Europe. So go check it out, search it out. I don't know where they got it from for $18 or $20, but this is a banger of a deal. If these skates don't do it for you, you can rip it out and put it put in some aftermarket skates for an additional couple of dollars more. Uh, 1000 Hz is more than enough polling rate for any kind of performance games. Uh, or you just want to try an ergo shape, you know, for 20 bucks, totally worth it. Uh, that is my choice. Uh, the only reason why I don't really rate the Kisona M600 is because it's kind of too small for me. I've got like weird big hand, big long fingers, so it doesn't really suit me. I can, I can force it and use it as my uh, small mouse kind of. I do have small mouses, but it's um, ATK at the moment. I can use this to replace the ATK if I wanted to, but I already have the ATK. That kind of like fills in the gap for me for small mouses, so I don't really jive with this mouse, but there is nothing essentially wrong with it. Uh, it's just not suited to my hand so much, but highly recommended if you are a kid, if you are 12, if you are young, if you are a girl, if you are five foot three, if you are five foot six, this is going to be perfect for you. Uh, anyway, that's my video for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Five mouse uh, budget bangers, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.